Praise the Lord. Let's have a word of prayer before the study. Father, we thank you for bringing us together. Thank you for the Bible study. Thank you for your word that ever remains fresh. And thank you for the name of Jesus. We pray, Lord, at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow tonight. All contrary powers will be cast out in Jesus' name. Blessing for everyone. Deliverance for everyone. Authority for everyone. And whatever we will bind here on earth is bound in heaven in Jesus' name. Set everyone free. Confirm your word in every life. In Jesus' name we pray. God bless you. You can sit down. I welcome everyone to the Bible study tonight. And I pray that God will give us an open heart, open eyes, open mind to receive everything that is revealing to us in Jesus' name. Today we're looking at Mark chapter 5. I will be studying from verse 1 all through to verse 20. Let me start with number verse 1. And they came over onto the other side of the sea. Stop there for a moment. They came over to the other side of the sea. Let me bring you back to Mark chapter 4, verse 35. And the same day, when the evening, evening was come, he says unto them, let us pass over unto the other side. You link that, connect that with chapter 5, verse 1. And he came over unto the other side of the sea. The Lord had given the word. He declared the word. And whatever word he declared was a decree. And it's still the same today. Jesus, the same yesterday and today and forever. And whatever he declares in your life becomes a decree. And as he gave that declaration, and he gave that decree, the storm arose in between the declaration and the destination. There was a storm, but the storm could not stop the declaration of the Lord Jesus Christ in your life, in my life, in the church, in your family. Between the declaration and the destination, no storm will cancel that word of the Lord in your life. It was impossible. And it is still impossible today that Satan will raise up any storm, any crisis, any problem that can totally annul, destroy, or cancel the declaration of the Lord Jesus Christ, when Christ has spoken, his word will be fulfilled. The spoken word will be fulfilled. The reaching word will be fulfilled. The revealed word will be fulfilled. And the word of a decree will be fulfilled. Look at what Jesus Christ himself said. So that anytime you hear the word, whatever comes after that word, a storm, a problem, a challenge, a crisis, Christ has spoken. And that word will be fulfilled. Matthew chapter 24. I'm reading from verse 35. Matthew Chapter 24, verse 35. 
heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words shall not pass away. That promise will be fulfilled in your life. Storm or no storm, crisis or challenge, whatever the difficulty or whatever problem he has spoken, it must be fulfilled. Numbers chapter 23. I'm reading from verse 19. God is not a man that he should lie. Neither the son of man that he should repent as he said and shall he not do it or as he spoke in and shall it not shall he not make it good behold I have received commandment to bless and he has blessed and I cannot reverse it Balaam cannot reverse the word of God False prophets cannot reverse the word of God. A false dream cannot reverse the word of God. A storm, a spiritual problem that may arise after he has spoken the word cannot reverse the word of God. It will be fulfilled. God's word in my life will be fulfilled. God's word in my family will be fulfilled. Psalm 119. Psalm 119. I'm reading from verse 89. 119, verse 89. Forever, O Lord, thy word is settled in heaven. Once the word is spoken, and the word is declared, and the word is decreed forever. O Lord, thy word is settled in heaven. Psalm 89, verse 34. Psalm 89, reading from verse 34. My covenant will I not break nor alter. The sin that has gone out of my lips. Christ opened his mouth and the word came out of his lips. Let us pass over unto the other side. And then he went to sleep. You can go to sleep after the word has been declared. Because that word will be fulfilled. Whatever you hear, whatever sight you see, Whatever you feel, whatever may roar, whatever challenge may come, that word will be fulfilled in our lives in Jesus' name. Isaiah chapter 40. I'm reading from verse 8. Isaiah chapter 40, verse 8. The grass withers and the flower fades, but the word of our God shall stand forever. That's a creator, that's a redeemer, that's a savior, that's a Lord, that's the one that is leading the way. He has given us the word and we rested on the word. When he gave us the word of salvation, we came, we were saved. He gave us the word of sanctification. We came, was sanctified. He told us to tarry and to ask for the Holy Ghost. And we tarried, we prayed, and the Holy Ghost came. He asked, we asked for healing. He healed us. And today, any other promise that remains to be fulfilled, your time has come. The Lord will fulfill His watch in our life in Jesus' name. It tells us pointedly, purposefully, and it tells us unwaveringly the word of the Lord will be fulfilled. Matthew chapter 18, I'm reading from verse 18. Matthew chapter 18, we're looking at verse 18. Verily, verily, I say unto you, whatsoever ye shall bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. 
and whatsoever you shall use on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Christ was telling his own disciples, he was giving authority and power to their word. I want you for a moment now to apply the word to Jesus himself. Because he was the one that said, let us pass over unto the other side. And you must understand, and whatever Jesus shall bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. And whatever Jesus shall loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. He has declared, he has said, we're passing on to the other side. Heaven has heard that. And Satan cannot change what heaven has heard. The storm cannot change what heaven has heard. And evil spirits or evil power cannot change what heaven has heard. When he said, let us pass over to the other side, chapter 5 verse 1 says, and to the other side they came. The next chapter of your life will be a fulfillment of what you are hearing today. Now for the believer, for the child of God, look at the assurance he's giving us. And look at the open door and look at the unchangeable, irreversible promise we have. Verse 18 again, Verily I say unto you, Whatsoever ye shall bind, put your name there, Whatsoever ye shall bind, I said put your name there, Whatsoever ye shall bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. And whatsoever ye shall lose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. I didn't hear your good, good amen. Mark chapter 11. I want you to say amen. Don't say an extraneous amen. Don't say a distracting amen. Don't say an amen that is to, to attract attention to yourself when the amen is uniform, when it is united, when somebody is not trying to draw us to another direction and saying amen that goes off the tangent. Don't allow Satan to pick up that amen and make it work against you. When we say amen, we say it uniformly and in unity there is strength and power. Look at Mark chapter 11 and I'm reading from verse 14. Mark 11, reading from verse 14. And Jesus answered and said unto it, no man eat fruit of thee hereafter forever. And his disciples heard it. Beyond his disciples, heaven had that. And once Jesus declares, it is finalized. That's why tonight in your life, the word of God is finalized and fulfilled in Jesus' name. Look at verse 20 now. And in the morning, as they passed by, they saw the fig tree dried up from the roots. And Peter calling to remembrance says unto him, Master, behold, the fig tree which thou cursed is withered away. And Jesus answering said unto them, not unto him alone, unto them, unto you, unto me, unto us, unto the whole church, have faith in God. For verily I say unto you, that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, be thou removed, and be cast, and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he says shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he says. I will have whatsoever I say. 
I will not wait for Peter. I will not wait for John. I will have whatsoever I say. I will not wait for prayer warrior. I will not pray for any intercessor. I will have whatsoever I say. Therefore, I say unto you, what things soever ye desire, when ye pray, believe that ye receive them, and ye shall have them. Tonight, and ye shall have them. This uh, month coming, new month, will bring a new experience and power in your life, and ye shall have them in Jesus' name. The storm that came, after the Lord had declared the word, could not annul, could not cancel the word that he had said. So they came over. They came over. You are coming over. And you are going over. And you are going to overcome in Jesus' name. They came over to the other side. Come back to Mark chapter 5. As they came over to the other side, what happened in chapter 5? One, there was a demonic problem waiting. Two, there was disease to be cured. And three, there was death to be cancelled. And because of that threefold problem, demon, disease, and death, that he was to solve the problem. That's why the storm came. But thank God, your storm is over. As he came to the other side, now there's going to be demonstration, demonstration of power against demons, against disease, and against death. Tonight we're looking at that first part, Christ's power and authority over all demons. That's the subject tonight, Christ's power and authority over all demons in this chapter 5 verses 1 through to 20 we're looking at three things number one the authority of christ over all demons the authority of christ over all demons number two the antagonism against christ after the deliverance he delivered the man the civil spirits went into the swine and they rushed and perished in the ocean in the sea and because of that all those people that saw it they said don't stay with us go away from us we don't want you antagonism against christ after the deliverance point number three an ambassador for christ throughout the capolis the man who was delivered the man who was set free wanted to follow jesus in the way and the lord said go back home and tell your friends in all the capolis tell your friends everywhere the people who have rejected me and the people who will not have me because they love their swine more than their salvation Go tell them the good thing, the great thing, and the gracious thing the Lord has done unto you. He became an ambassador, an ambassador for Christ throughout the Catholics. Come back to point number one. The authority of Christ over all demons. What are you doing from verse one? Look at verse one. It says, and they came over unto the other side of the sea into the country of the gatherings and when he was come out of the sheep immediately they met him out of the tombs a man with an unclean spirit who had his dwelling among the tombs and no man could bite him no not with chains because that he had often been bound with fetters and chains 
and the chain and the chains had been plucked asunder by him and the fetters broke him in pieces neither could any man tame him and always night and day he was in the mountains and in the tombs crying and clutching himself was told but when he saw Jesus afar off he ran and worshipped him and cried with a loud voice and said what have I to do with thee Jesus thou son of the most high God I adjure you I adjure thee by God that thou torment me not for he hath said for Christ hath said for Jesus hath said unto him come out of the man thou unclean spirit and he asked him what is thy name and he answered saying my name is legion for we are many and he besought him much that he would not send them out of the country now there was there nice unto the mountains a great herd of swine feeding and all the devils all the demons all the evil spirits besought him saying send us into the swine that we may enter into them and fourth we is jesus gave them leave and the unclean spirits went out and entered into the swine and the herd ran violently down a steep place into the sea. They were about 2,000. And they were choked in the sea. Christ has authority. Christ has power. And that power remains today. That when he said, go, just one word. All those demons, thousands of them legion and then they went to those two into those two thousand swine pigs and they perished as we look at this i see number one the activity and the characteristics of demons what do they do evil spirits what do they do demons what do they do those messengers of satan in people's lives Number one, the activity and the characteristics of demons. Number two, the authority of Christ over demons. He has authority. And that authority remains the same today. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday and today and forever. And if you have any challenge, the Lord will take care of that challenge in Jesus' name. Number three, our ability to cast out demons. It's giving us the ability and authority and the power. Our ability to cast out demons. Look at number one, the activity and the characteristics of demons. As you look at Mark chapter 5, you have this man in verse 2. It says, he was in the tomb. He will not stay in the house. The devil drove him to a place of darkness, a place of departed spirits. And it says in the latter part of verse 2, he had an unclean spirit. In verse 3, it says he was dwelling among the tombs. He was separated from society. He will not fit in society because the demons have made him not to be compatible with society. Are there people like that? They cannot stay quietly in the midst of other people. Either they are shouting or they are screaming or they are crying or they are enjoying themselves because they cannot live at peace in the community of people. 
not to leave that he had a kind of extra human power they bound him with fetters and they bound him with chains and it was like uh, nothing could bind him he broke the chains in pieces now you you understand there are people like that there's they have this problem that you try to help and you try to bind and you try to make them keep quiet they cannot an evil spirit a demon has taken over their lives in a latter part of verse 4 it says and neither could any man tame him have you noticed people that they're beyond themselves and they want to control themselves they cannot other people want to trim the team them they cannot other people want to bring them quiet they cannot because another power is working in their lives and they are the people that will say you know i'd like to be quiet but i couldn't I like to stay calm, but I couldn't because nothing and nobody could tame them. And always night and day, in verse 5, he was in the mountains. He was jobless. He had thrown away profession. He had taken, he had a kind of a taking to the mountains. And he was like that, crying and coaching himself. He was feeling the pain. That's why he was crying. And yet, all the crying and all the pain could not stop him. He was still hurting himself and cutting himself with stones. And when he saw Jesus, he ran to worship him. But then the next verse says, he cried out and says, What am I to do with you, Jesus, thou son of the Most High? Have you seen, uh, you know, those two have double personalities. On the one hand, they are running to Jesus as if they want something from Jesus. When they get to Jesus, then they're saying, what have I to do with you? Get away from me. It was not the man. It was the evil spirit. You know, sometimes you find people like that. They want to do good. And they come to church. And they come. They say they are coming to Christ. And they are even running. I must not miss anything in the service. And now they come to the service. They turn to be another person. And then they'll be crying out, we don't want that. We don't want Bible. We don't want the teaching of the word of God. But you are the one running and you are coming. And now that you have come, you turn to be another man. Split personality. And Jesus said, come out of him. Whatever personality is driving anyone, distracting anyone, it will come out tonight in Jesus' name. Mark chapter 9. I'm reading from verse 17. Mark chapter 9, verse 17. The activity and the characteristics of demons. And one of the multitude answered and said, Master, I have brought unto thee my son, which has a dumb spirit. And wheresoever he taketh him, he teareth him, and foameth, and gash and gnashes with his teeth, and pineth away. And I speak to the disciples that they should cast him out, and he could not. You see, this one, uh, it wasn't like the other man were, because the characteristics of demons vary from person to person. This one will foam in the mouth. And this one would gnash with the teeth and cut his uh, own uh, tongue with his teeth. And then he's pining away. He's dying away. And sometimes he'll fall into the water and sometimes into the fire. And Jesus, he answered him saying, O faceless generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I suffer you? Bring him unto me. And they brought him unto him. And when he saw him, straightway the spirit cheered him. And he began to tear himself, but people will not understand. It's the evil spirit. When you find people like that, tearing themselves, destroying themselves, cutting themselves, doing evil to themselves, it's not them, it's the evil spirit. And he fell to the ground and wallowed for me. And he asked his father, How long is it ago since this came upon him? 
and he said of a child and often times it has cast him into the fire and into the waters to destroy him but if thou canst do anything have compassion on us on him on me on the mother on the family and help us jesus says unto him if thou canst believe all things are possible to him that believeth. tonight all things are possible to everyone who believes in jesus name luke chapter 8 the activity and the characteristics of demons luke chapter 8 verse 29 in verse 29 for he had commanded the unclean spirit to come out of the man for often times it had caught him and he was kept bound in chains or chains and in fetters and he break the bands and was driven of the devil into the desert driven of the devil running when there was nobody chasing him he had seen an evil personality evil power and now he's running and running to the wilderness but jesus could solve the problem and jesus will solve our problems and jesus will solve my problem he will in jesus name the authority of christ over demons the authority of christ over demons look at verse 8 and he said unto him come out of the man thou unclean spirit come out of the man thou unclean spirit and he asked him what is thy name and he answered saying my name is legion for we are many there were thousands of them and those thousands of demons had different diverse characteristics and there are people you see them today there's a characteristic being manifested another day another negative thing i say i cannot understand it's not him it's not her it's because of the many diverse different dangerous demons operating in that life today you are free and he besought him much that he will not send them away out of the country do you notice that language there look at verse 10 he singular that's the man talking that's the chief of those demons talking and then it says that he besought him besought christ much that he christ will not send tell me the next word them plural that is he the chief demon the commanding demon the controlling demon the one that controls all the others besought the lord that he will not cast them now in their thousands out of the country now there was there near to the mountains a great herd of swine feeding and all the devils plural thousands of them besought him christ saying send us plural into the swine that we may enter into them how do you understand that you would have preferred to stay in the man the man is a better house better accommodation better habitation for them but if you're going to send us out our next priority will be so that we're not just in the air roaming about in the desert in the wilderness send us into the animals into the swine and forthwith jesus bid them give them leave and the unclean spirits went out and entered into the swine and the herd ran violently down 
as the evil spirits were driving the man, now they, were, they drove the swine into the sea. About 2,000 of them, and they were choked and they perished. And they that fetched the swine fled. And they told each in the city and in the country. And they went out to see what it was that was done. And when and they came and they come to Jesus and see him that was possessed with the devil and had the legion sitting and clothed and in his right mind and they were afraid. Jesus has power and today he still has the power. And his word always comes out with authority and power. Come to chapter 9. Chapter 9, I'm reading from verse 22. Chapter 9, verse 22, and oft times it has cast him into the fire and into the waters to destroy him. But if thou canst do anything, have compassion on us, and help us. Can Jesus do anything? In your, in your personal life, can Jesus do anything? In your family, can Jesus do anything? In that person you are concerned about, can Jesus do anything? He can and he will. And Jesus said unto him, If thou canst believe, all things are possible to him that believeth. And straightway, the father of the child cried out and said with tears, Lord, I believe, help thou my own belief. And when Jesus saw that the people came running together, he rebuked the foul spirit, saying unto him, Thou dumb and deaf spirit, I charge thee, I command thee, I charge thee, come out of him and enter no more into him. And the evil spirit cried, and rent him sore, and came out of him. And he was in the, he was as one dead, in so much that many said, he is dead. But Jesus took him by the hand, and lifted him up, and he arose. And when he was come into the house, his disciples asked him privately, Why could not we cast him out? But you will. I said you will. Why could we not cast him out? The ability to cast out demons. We're coming to Mark chapter 16. Mark chapter 16. Reading from verse 17. And these signs shall follow them that believe. Any believer in the house today? Any believer at the study today? And these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name, tell me. Have you gone to sleep? I said, tell me. Say it as if it will happen. Shall they cast out devils? They shall speak with new tongues. Amen. They shall take up serpents. Amen. And if they drink any deadly sin, it shall not hurt them. Give me a good amen. amen. They shall lay their hands on the sick and they shall recover. The ability to cast out devils for every believing brother, every believing sister, it will happen through you. Luke chapter 10. Verse 17, Luke chapter 10, verse 17, and the 70 returned again with joy, saying, Lord, even the devils are subject unto us through thy name. Even the demons are subject unto us through thy name. And he said unto them, I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. Behold, I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions 
and over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt you nothing shall by any means hurt you notwithstanding in this rejoice not that the spirits are subject unto you but rather rejoice because your names are written in heaven it will happen we're coming now to point number two and we're reading from mark chapter five mark chapter five we're reading from verse 12 all through to verse 17 mark chapter five verse 12 and all the devils besought him saying send us into the swine that we may enter into them and forthwith jesus gave them leave and the unclean spirits went out and entered into the swine and the herd ran violently down a steep place into the sea they were about two thousand and were choked in the sea and they that fed the swine fled and told each in the city and in the country and they went out to see what it was that was done and they come to jesus and see him that was possessed with the devil and urge the legion notice that possessed with the devil singular that he is the chief of them but then they explained urge the legion thousands living there tormenting him they saw him now sitting and closed and in his right mind and they were afraid and they that saw it told them how it befell to him that was possessed with the devil and also concerning the swine and they began to pray him to depart out of their coasts point number two the antagonism against christ after the deliverance those who had seen and had witnessed the deliverance of the demoniac and the drowning of the swine they ran back to the city with the news and then they said why well, have you done that how is it that all the swine were totally destroyed maybe you have that question in your mind how is it that Christ helping a man allowed 2,000 pigs to be destroyed. You know why? The children of Israel, the Jews, were not supposed, they were forbidding to eat swine or pig. And if they could not eat swine, they should not be raising a swine to sell to the people and so because they were forbidding to raise swine or to eat swine that's why the lord permitted that and those illegitimate work they were doing perished with the deliverance of the man not only that the soul of the man was more was more than all the peaks in the world what shall he profit a man if he shall gain if he shall have all the pigs in the world and lose his own soul the soul of one person was greater than all the pigs that's why it happened but the people did not understand and because of their lack of understanding and they add more value for the pigs than for the soul of the man that's why they drove jesus away they were antagonistic and they said we don't want you in our community look at three things here number one a clear liberation from evil spirits a clear liberation the man was liberated was delivered 
and it was very clear look at verse 15 and they come to jesus and see him that was possessed with the devil and arch the legion sitting and closed and in his right mind and they were afraid it was a clear libration and when god touches your life like he will do tonight it will be very clear everywhere you go when we're truly converted there'll be clear demonstration of that conversion of that libration ephesians chapter 4 in Ephesians chapter 4, I read from verse 20. Ephesians chapter 4, we're reading from verse 20. In verse 20, But ye have not so learned Christ, if so be that ye have heard him, and have been taught by him, as the truth is in Jesus. And what's the evidence that you are liberated and converted by him? That she put up concerning the former conversation, the old man, which is corrupt according to the deceitful laws, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind. That man was renewed. That man became restful. That man became peaceful. It was a clear evidence of his liberation. When you are renewed in the spirit of your mind, and that she put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. That's the evidence that you are totally liberated. The former things are passed away. A new life is now visible in your character in first peter chapter one first peter chapter one i read from verse 13 first peter chapter one verse 13 wherefore get up the loins of your mind the sober and hope to the end for the grace that is to be brought unto you at the revelation of Jesus Christ as obedient children, not fashioning yourselves according to your former lusts in your ignorance. Your former lusts, that's gone. Your former behavior, that's gone. Your former truancy, violence, that's gone. Your former disobedience, that's gone a new life has come and it is that new life that shows a clear liberation from your past in verse 15 but as see which has called you is holy so be ye holy in all manner of conversation because it is written be ye holy for i am holy romans chapter 12 in Romans chapter 12, from verses 1 and 2, a clear vibration, a clear evidence that you have met Jesus, and Jesus has touched you, and Jesus has transformed you. Look at Romans chapter 12, verse 1. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy acceptable unto God which is your reasonable service and be not conformed to this world but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that she may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God number one there a clear liberation from evil spirits number two a consuming love for their swine a consuming love for their swine they lodged the swine more than the savior they lodged the swine more than salvation they lodged the swine the pig more than their soul and you have they are consuming love for their so for their swine demonstrated mark 
chapter 5, reading from verse 16. And they that saw it told them how it befell to him that possessed the devil, was possessed with the devil, and also concerning the swine. And they began to pray him, and they began to tell him, and they began to push him away to depart out of their coasts. They loved the forbidden swine more than the Lord, the Savior. A consuming love for the forbidden. Look at Leviticus chapter 11. Leviticus chapter 11. Reading from verse 7 and verse 8. Leviticus 11 verse 7 and verse 8. These were Jewish people and these were Israelites. They should have had nothing to do with the swine. But now they were raising thousands of pigs. It says in Leviticus 11 verse 7 and the swine, though he divide, though he divides the hoof, and be cloven footed, yet he choweth not the cord. He is unclean to you. The swine is unclean to you. Of their flesh shall ye not eat, and their carcass shall ye not touch. For they are unclean unto you. And we find these Israelites, not only that an individual will not eat, they raised up a company, they raised up a profession, they raised up a work to do. And the work was to be producing that which the Almighty God had forbidden. And now they had such love, consuming love, to that swine that even when the deliverance came to the man, they drove Jesus away because of that. We're looking at Luke chapter 15. Luke chapter 15. We're reading from verse 15. Luke 15, verse 15. And he went and joined himself to a citizen of that country. And he sent him into the fields to feed swine. That's the prodigal son. He had departed away from the Lord. He had forsaken his father. And he had forsaken the teaching and the bringing of the home. And he went into a far country. When he got into that far country, he lost everything that he had. All he could do now was that he went to a citizen of the far country where he was. And that one sent him into the fields to feed swine, something forbidden. You see, when people backslide and they say, I can't stay here anymore. I can't stay where the deeper life is taught, where the deeper doctrine is taught, where the deeper teaching of the word of God is taught. I want to go to another place, a far place. Eventually they come to poverty and penury. And then they go now to feed the swine and to do that which is forbidden. Verse 16, and he would fain have filled his belly of the husks that the swine did eat, and no man gave unto him. He was even willing now not only to eat the swine, but even to eat what the swine was eating. And when he came to himself, he said, How many hired servants of my fathers have bread enough and to spare, and I perish with hunger. I will arise and go to my father, and will say unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before thee, and I am no more worthy to be called thy son. Make me as one of thy hired servants. At least I know I will not feed swine anymore. At least I know I will not be looking for the food of the swine to eat if I become one of the hired servants. And he arose. And he came to his father. 
but when he was yet a great way off, his father saw him and had compassion and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. And the son said unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and in thy sight, and I am no more worthy to be called thy son. But the father said unto his servants, Bring forth the best robe and put it on him, and put a ring on his hand, and shoes on his feet, and bring either the fatted calf, not swine, and kill it, and let us eat and be merry. Look at this. For this my son was dead. While feeding swine, they are dead. While receiving swine, they are dead. They are dead in sins and trespasses. He was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found and they began to be merry. Second Peter. Second Peter chapter 2. I'm reading from verse 20. Second Peter chapter 2. Reading from verse 20. For if after they have escaped the pollutions of the world through the knowledge of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, they are again entangled therein and overcome. The latter end is worse with them than the beginning. For it had been better for them not to have known the way of righteousness than after they have known it. They have known the way of righteousness to turn from the holy commandment delivered unto them. But it is happened unto them. According to the true proverb, the dog is turned to his own vomit again. And the soul, what's another name for the soul? The swine. The swine that was washed to a wallowing in the mire. Those people loved the pig more than their soul, more than the Savior, more than their salvation. Three, the costly loss of their souls. The costly loss of their souls. You see what happened to them? They drove the Savior away because of their love for the swine. The costly love of their souls. Come to Mark chapter 5. Verse 17, Mark chapter 5, verse 17. And they began to pray him to depart out of their coasts. They said, the souls could be lost. That's all right for them. Since their swine had been lost, they also could lose their soul. The costly loss of their souls. Mark chapter 8, reading from verse 36. Mark chapter 8, verse 36. For what shall it profit a man if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? If you could gain all the swine in the world, all the pigs in the world, all the poultry in the world, all the money in the world, all the material things in the world, and you lose your soul, what's your gain? But these people do not consider the loss of their soul. Look at verse 37. Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? There are people who love material things, modern salvation. They love earthly things more than their souls and they perish i pray you will not perish philippians chapter 3 philippians chapter 3 i read from verse 18 philippians chapter 3 verse 18 for many walk 
of whom I have told you often, and now tell you, even weeping, that they are the enemies of the cross of Christ, whose end is destruction, whose God is their belly, whose glory is in their shame, who mind earthly things. There are people who are not conscious, they have a soul, a soul to save, a heaven to get to, a hell to escape. And the apostles said, I think about them, I weep. I talk about them, I cry. And when I meditate on their destiny and what they are doing to themselves, it says, I am weeping continually. Their end is destruction. Their God is their belly. The glory in feeding the swine. The glory in doing a shameful thing. The mind has least things. I pray that will not happen to you. Look at Job chapter 21. Job 21, reading from verse 11. Job chapter 21, verse 11. They sent forth the little ones like a flock. The children dance. They take the timbrel and the harp and rejoice at the sound of the organ. It's talking about the nightclub festivities. They spend their days in wells, and in a moment they go down to the grave. Therefore, they say unto God, Depart from us in the days of their wells. Depart from us in the days of their spiritual blindness. Depart from us in the days when they can only think of their swine and think only of business and think only of profit and think only of material things. They say we're in business, we're doing something here. God, depart from us for we, for we desire not the knowledge of thy ways. What is the Almighty that we shall serve him and what profit should we have if we pray unto him? He's talking about the people that can only think of material things and then they perish without a chance to be saved. Job chapter 22, reading from verse 15. Job 22, verse 15. As thou march the old way which wicked men have trodden, which were cut down out of time, whose foundation was overflown with a flood, which said unto God, Depart from us, and what can the Almighty do for them? Those are the people. They tell the Lord to depart, and eventually they will hear the word from the Almighty, Depart from me. You loved swine more than your soul. You loved material things more than your salvation, more than heaven. Luke chapter 13. We're reading from verse 27. Luke 13. Verse 27, but he shall say, I tell you, I know you not whence ye are. Depart from me, all ye workers of iniquity. Then there shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth, when ye shall see Abraham and Isaac and Jacob and all the prophets in the kingdom of God and you yourselves thrust out. I pray you will not be thrust out of the kingdom. Matthew chapter 25, verse 41. Matthew 25, verse 41. Then shall you say also unto them on the left hand, Depart from me. Ye cursed into everlasting fire, 
prepared for the devil and his angels, prepared for the demons and the angels of Satan. I pray you will not spend eternity with the demons, with the evil spirits in Jesus' name. You must not drive away your Savior. You must not drive away the Lord. Whatever the circumstance and whatever the situation, you must welcome Jesus to be your Savior. And even if the swine will be lost, if material things will be lost, you're not going to allow the swine to hinder you from getting to the kingdom of God. You'll be wise in Jesus' name. Mark chapter 5, point number 3 now, an ambassador for Christ throughout the Capolis. An ambassador for Christ throughout the the Capolis. We're reading from verse 18. And when he was coming to the sheep, he that had been possessed with the devil prayed him, pleaded with him that he might be with him. How be it? Jesus suffered him not, allowed him not, permitted him not, but says unto him, Go home. To thy friends and tell them how great things the Lord had done for thee and has had compassion on thee. And he departed and began to publish in the Capolis how great things Jesus had done for him and all men did marvel. God will use you. In our city, God will use you. Everywhere you go, the Lord will use you in Jesus' name. He became an ambassador, an ambassador for Christ throughout the Capolis. That's what the Capolis actually is a compound word. It means ten cities. Ten cities. A new convert, a new believer, somebody that was just delivered newly liberated man in the capolis in all the ten cities he began to publish the word of god and he was a good successful effective ambassador an ambassador for christ through the capolis three things here number one the test of true conversion the test of true conversion number two the task for true converts, the task true converts have. You're a true convert, you're a true disciple, you're a true saint of God, you're a true child of God. The task for true converts, number three, the triumph of true consecration. The triumph of, of true consecration. Number one, the test of true conversion. Look at verse 18. Chapter 5, verse 18, And when he was come into the sheep, he that had been possessed with the devil prayed him, pleaded with him that he might be with him. He wanted to be with Christ. He's not going to go back to the tombs. He's not going to go back to the mountains. He's not going to go back to those valleys. He's not going to go back to those dark places. He now wanted to be with Jesus, the light of the world. When you're truly converted, the test of genuine true conversion is that you want to be with the Lord. You want to stay with the Lord. You want to abide with the Lord. John chapter 6. John chapter 6. Verse 68, the test of true conversion. Then Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom shall we go? Thou hast the words of eternal life. And we believe and are sure that thou art that Christ, the Son of the living God. To whom shall we go? We're going to stay with you. We're going to abide with you. You have the words of eternal life. 
we've heard much we want to hear more and we want to stay with you until you take us to that life everlasting that's the test of true conversion look at john chapter 8 verse 31 john chapter 8 verse 31 then said jesus to those jews would believed on him if ye continue in my word, then are ye my disciples indeed. That liberated man wanted to stay with Jesus, hearing the word, analyzing the word, meditating on the word, believing the word, and having new experiences through the word. If ye continue in my word, then. Are you my disciples indeed? John chapter 15, reading from verses 4 and 5. John 15, verse 4. Abide in me, and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine. No more can ye, except ye abide in me. I am the vine. And ye are the branches. He that abideth in me, and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me ye can do nothing. The evidence that you have been converted, you are saved, is that you have a change of life. And you are sitting down, and you are calm, and you are peaceful. The wickedness of the past is gone. The violence of the past is gone. The hard drugs you used to take, cutting yourself, cutting yourself, committing slow suicide, gradual suicide. Everything is gone. You are now a new creature in Christ. First John chapter 2. I read from verse 28. First John chapter 2. Reading from verse 28. And now, little children, and now, little converts, and now, little disciples, abide in him, that when he shall appear, we may have confidence and not be ashamed before him at his coming. If you backslide and you don't abide, you'll have shame on that final day but if you continue and you pass the test of true conversion when he comes you'll be found in him you'll abide i will abide i will remain i will not go astray i will not follow false prophets you're following them I will not follow false prophets. I will abide in the Lord. Point number two now there, the task for true converts. If you are really born again, if you are truly saved, if you are a real child of God, that's a task for you. Look at verse 19, Mark chapter 5, verse 19. Mark chapter 5, verse 19. How be it, Jesus suffered him not, but says unto him, Go home to thy friends, and tell them how great things the Lord has done for thee, and has had compassion on thee. The task for true converts. John chapter 4. Reading from verse 28, John chapter 4, verse 28, and the woman let then left her water pot and went her way into the city and says to the men, Come, see a man who told me all things that ever I did. Is not this the Christ? Then they went out of the city and came unto him. He brought many, she brought many people unto the Lord. That's our task. When you are born again, when you say you are a child of God, 
when you say you have been liberated, when you say you have been saved, the task of the true disciple, true convert, true child of God is that you go and tell the story of redemption. You go and tell and speak and proclaim and publicize the message of the gospel. Luke chapter 10, verse 37. Luke chapter 10, verse 37. And he said, He that showed mercy on him, then said Jesus unto him, Go and do thou likewise. You see what the liberated man did? Go and do thou likewise. You see what that woman at the well what she did after her salvation, after she received Jesus, and she knew this is the Christ, this is the Messiah, this is my Savior, this is the giver of the living water. She went to the town to tell everybody to fulfill the task of the true convert. Luke chapter 14, I'm reading from verse 23. Luke chapter 14, verse 23. And the Lord said unto the servant, Go out into the highways and hedges and compel them to come in. Speak to them, compel them to come in. Preach to them, compel them to come in. Testify unto them. Tell them how great things the Lord has done for you and is willing to do for them. Compel them to come in that my house may be filled. You will be a witness to the Lord in Jesus' name. Now, point number three, the triumph of true consecration. The triumph of true consecration. The people that receive some benefit from the Lord and then they vanish away. You can't see them anymore. You can't even see them attending church service. You cannot see them witnessing. You cannot see them preaching about Christ who has set them free. But this man had the triumph of true consecration. We're reading from Mark chapter 5, verse 20. Mark chapter 5, verse 20. And he departed and began to publish in Decapolis, all those ten cities, how great things the Lord had done for him, and all men did marvel. When he spoke, he didn't speak like a mad man, an insane man, a demon-possessed man. His life has not totally changed. His language changed. His appearance changed. He was now well dressed as a person touched and transformed by the Lord. And when he spoke about the Lord, he was believable. Look at Luke chapter 8. In Luke chapter 8, I'm reading from verse 39. Luke chapter 8, the same story, but it tells you clearly what he did and the effect of what he did. Luke chapter 8, verse 39. Return to thine house and show how great things God has done unto thee. And he went his way and he published throughout the whole city how great things Jesus had done unto him. He didn't say, I'm a new convert. I won't know what to tell them. I'm afraid of them. I feel shy. It's only the evil spirit that made me bold like an extrovert. But now that the evil spirit is gone, I am shy. I am frightened of people. I'm fearful. I wouldn't know what to tell them. He obeyed the Lord promptly. You will obey the Lord. And he went his way in obedience to what the Lord had said. And he published throughout the whole city. Started with that city out of the ten. How great things Jesus had done unto him. Look at the result. The triumph of true consecration. 
And it came to pass that when Jesus was returned, the people gladly received him, for they were all waiting for him. These were the people that had driven him away. These were the people that said, you destroyed our swine, our pigs. We don't want to listen to you. But now because the man became a true ambassador throughout the capolis, they were waiting for him and they heard the word. The Lord will make you a true ambassador of Christ. You will speak the word. You will publicize the word. And many will come to receive the Lord as their personal savior in Jesus' name. Give me a rousing amen. Acts chapter 26. I'm reading from verse 18. Acts chapter 26, verse 18. To open their eyes and to turn them from darkness to light and from the power of Satan unto God, that they may receive forgiveness of sins and inheritance among them which are sanctified by faith that is in me. Whereupon, O King Agrippa, I was not disobedient unto the heavenly vision, but showed forth unto them of Damascus and at Jerusalem, and throughout all the coasts of Judea, and then to the Gentiles, that they should repent and turn to God and do works meet for repentance. Like all these people obeyed the Lord, we will obey the Lord. Acts chapter 11, reading from verse 21. Acts 11, verse 21. And the hand of the Lord was on them. And a great multitude, a great number, believed and turned unto the Lord. We're going and we're going to scatter throughout the capolis, our cities, and other cities. And we're going to publish what Christ has done. Christ has delivered us. We're going to tell about it. Christ has liberated us, and we're going to preach it. Christ has saved us, and we're going to tell everybody, everywhere, in Jesus' name. If you are not delivered yet tonight, you are delivered in Jesus' name. If you are not liberated yet tonight, you are liberated in Jesus' name. If there's any power, any spirit still tormenting your life tonight, all the power of torment will be cancelled in Jesus' name. It may be one demon or two or two thousand or six thousand, deliverance has come. I said deliverance has come. The power of Christ still remains the same today. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and today and forever. And what he did for that man and what he did for people like him all over the centuries. Tonight is tonight. He'll do it for you. Salvation has come. Healing has come. Deliverance has come. Total liberation has come. And as the Lord delivers you, you will abide with the Lord. You will stay with the Lord. And then in your community, everywhere you go, you'll tell about Jesus the Savior, and Jesus the Healer, and Jesus the Deliverer. And your message will be believable in Jesus' name. And many, many, many people through you will turn unto the Lord. What are you? Are you going to do it? I said, are you going to do it? I said, are you going to do it? Rise up and tell the Lord, tonight is a night of blessing. It's a night of liberation. It's a night of deliverance. It's a night of salvation. And it's a night of total, total redemption. Open your mouth and talk to the Lord and say, yes, Lord, I believe. Yes, Lord, I believe. I'm here tonight. And I know you will touch my life 
I know you will liberate me. Total liberation will come to you. If you ask him, you will do it. You see that's authority today. The authority of Christ over all demons. The authority of Christ over all diseases. The authority of Christ over all disaster. The authority of Christ over all difficulties. The authority of Christ over all challenges. The authority of Christ over every power that may torment your life. Open your mouth. That man opened his mouth and said, Lord, Lord, I want deliverance. Even though something was still, was also knocking, and something was contradicting, as if Christ, what have I to deal with you? Depart from me. But it was the devil. That devil will come out. That evil power will come out. The power that makes you a double personality. You come, and then you want to go. You arrive, you want to depart. You see Christ, and you want to run away from him. And you want something good, and then you want something evil at the same time. That evil thing that makes you a double personality, all that will live your life tonight. Tell him, tell him, tell him, he will. He'll set you free. Break the yoke in your life and destroy the evil thing in your life. Evil spirit will vanish away tonight. All those dangerous things in your life will vanish away tonight. All those things that want to destroy your life, destroy your future, destroy your eternity, and make you spend eternity with demons, all those things will vanish away tonight. Call upon him. He saves. Call upon him. He delivers. Call upon him, he forgives. Call upon him, he'll deliver you. From the top of your to the tip of your toe, your head, your brain, your mind, your spirit, your soul, your personality. The Lord will deliver you tonight. And it's in your life, repent. Not thou sin and Satan to run your life, to ruin your life, to destroy your chance of getting saved. He'll forgive if you will repent. Any power stopping you from living right they will cast it out any power disturbing you from living a righteous life they will put a stop to that tonight any power that makes sin so strong evil spirit so strong evil power so strong Bad behavior so strong that you couldn't be delivered. Tonight is your night. Take that problem, take that personality to the Lord in prayer. He will deliver you. A good life will come. A new life will come. A beautiful life will come. A new behavior will come. New activity in your life, you'll be calm. Violence will go away from your life. Wickedness will go away from your life. You will have power over every sin that has had dominion over your life. Christ is able. Call upon Him, mighty Savior, a mighty deliverer. A mighty redeemer, he'll set you free. Whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be delivered. 
Whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be set free. He'll set you free. Set you free. Set you free. From every evil, set you free. From every sin, set you free. From every chain, set you free. From all the fetters, set you free. From all those difficult challenges in your life that doesn't, that do not allow you to live right, it'll set you free. Pray that the Lord will not allow antagonism in your heart against Christ. Because of swine, because of pigs, because of material things, because of a girlfriend, because of a man's sin partner, pray that the Lord will not allow antagonism in your heart against the preaching of the word of God. Because of a forbidding thing, that the Lord will not allow antagonism against the preaching. Because of something you love more than Christ. Gold, silver, man, woman, sin partner, adulterer, adulteress, swine, pig, forbidding business, occultism, dark powers, pray that God will not allow antagonism in your heart against Christ, against the preaching of the word, against the Bible, against some doctrine, against Bible study, against the ministry, pray that God will not allow antagonism in your heart because of swine, because of pigs, because of material things. Pray that the Lord will give you love for the Savior, love for Christ, love for the sound doctrine of the Word of God, love for change of life, love for salvation, Love for your own soul. Love for the Savior. Love for life eternal. You'll not love anything in the world. More than the Savior. Swine. More than the Savior. Pigs. More than the Savior. Material things. More than the Savior. You will not love temporary things more than the Savior. Pray that the Lord will touch your heart. You will not be like those people antagonistic against the Savior because of material things. Nothing will be so attached to your heart, so precious to you, that you will abandon the Lord. Temporary things, temporal things of the world will not catch your attention, will not captivate your soul and capture you that you don't have love for the Lord from the depths of your heart. Pray that the Lord, as he has saved you, will make you a real ambassador. A good ambassador, a true ambassador. You'll have the evidence of true conversion, evidence of true change of life, evidence of loving the Lord. You want to abide with the Lord, stay with the Lord. You love His word. You love his ministry. You love, you love his worship. 
you show the evidence of true conversion and the task for true converts go tell everyone at home everyone in your community everyone in your office everyone in the marketplace go tell them what Christ the Savior has done for you what Christ the sanctifier has done for you tell them what Christ the healer the deliverer has done for you tell them passionately tell them purposefully tell them persistently tell them effectively and let's see the triumph of your true consecration now when you tell when you preach when you proclaim when you witness you witness effectively that the people who hear you they want to come to the Lord Jesus the same yesterday today and forever Christ Jesus has the power the power to forgive the power to save the power to quicken whom he will Christ Jesus has the power come to him stay with him and publicize him everywhere you go that he still has all authority and all power today in Jesus name we pray and the victorious people of God shout and the expectant people of God shout and the conquering people of God shout you are taking victory back home liberation back home healing up back home you'll be more than a conqueror in Jesus name and the fear that has tied down your life your chains are broken and as you go and tell the story and tell the news about Christ the Savior about Christ the healer about Christ the deliverer about Christ the Redeemer you'll say that and proclaim that confidently in Jesus name and the people you talk to the Lord will penetrate their hearts of the world and the Word of God will have effect and impact in their lives in Jesus name I'll be an ambassador where are you I'll be an ambassador where are you you will be and the word will prosper in your mouth in Jesus name raise up your hands father in jesus name we well, thank you lord because you have given us the name of jesus and at the mention of the name of jesus every knee shall bow every demon will flee away every disease will be healed oh lord we come against every demon every legion every disease every oppression every evil spirit and we command get out in jesus name lord i pray that demon of bad habit the demon of habitual sinning the demon of of drugs and the demon of hurting themselves and killing themselves slow slow gradual suicide i command come out of their lives in jesus name and whatever evil power 
is operating in any life to do any evil thing. I take authority over that evil thing right now in Jesus' name. You're loosed. You're free. You are delivered. The Lord set everyone free in Jesus' name. I pray for those who have hatred against the word of God unconsciously, unintentionally, helplessly. They have brought themselves to think of swine, of material things more important than their soul. More important than their salvation. More important than their savior. And they do not know that they are on their way to perdition to hell. Oh Lord, deliver them from antagonism in Jesus' name. From the hatred that will destroy them. From the persecution that will destroy them. From their sending Christ away from their lives that will destroy them. Save them in Jesus' name. New life for everyone. Peaceful life for everyone. Reasonable life for everyone. Righteous life for everyone. Instead of violence, let there be peace. Instead of wickedness, let there be calmness. And I pray, Lord, the evidence of real conversion you will exhibit and demonstrate in every life in Jesus' name. Reveal in everyone the very evidence of true conversion. And give everyone the passion and the desire to carry out the task of the true convert in Jesus' name. And as we all go at every opportunity talking to people around us about Christ the Savior, Christ the Healer, Christ the Redeemer, Christ the One who is all in all for us. We we'll pray, Lord, our message of Redemption will be believable by the people we are talking to in Jesus' name. And I pray, Lord, many will come out of sin, come out of darkness, come out of their dungeon, come out of captivity, and they will come to Christ the Lord as their Savior in Jesus' name. As your people go back home, go with them. The joy of salvation go with them. The joy of liberation go with them. And the joy of being more than a conqueror go with them. And the triumph of consecration go with everyone. We well, thank you, Lord, because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray.